Hey everybody, I've been debating whether I should do an episode on hand warmers. They're quite popular nowadays, they're simple and can be very effective in certain situations. And when you come to a, doing a task in extreme cold weather, using hand warmers can make it a little bit more manageable. So I'd like to share with you the how and when I use these and well, here we go. Now there's four different types of hand warmers that are most common today and they are the air activated, there's a saturated which is known as a snap and heat battery powered and types that use fuel like the old Johnny hand warmers that I used years ago. I don't know if any of you old timers remember that. They don't make them anymore but now Zippo does. With the air activated there's a chemical one use and the reusable. In this episode we're going to look at the most popular one which is a chemical one use. The ingredients inside is just basically iron powder, salt, water, vermiculite and activated carbon which makes them quick and simple to activate. These hand warmers work on iron oxidation to produce heat. That means they have to have airflow to start the oxidation. You just simply remove them from the container. Shake them so the airflow or oxygen will activate them. The oxidation process begins immediately and you'll notice a gradual increase in the heat for about 20 minutes. They'll stay warm for quite a long time, five hours and up. As long as there's airflow and oxygen, and some brands will claim that theirs will last up to 8 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, even 18 hours. And some claim to last up to 24 hours. And I've found that most of them don't make their time limits. So don't bank on those times. And if you're going to be out in the cold weather for a long period of time, get the longest lasting ones that you can find. They're clean, no messing around with lighter fluid, no odor. They're lightweight because you don't have to carry any batteries or fuel. Though they're made for one use only, there's a way to make them reusable. After using them for a short period of time, under five hours, you can deactivate them by putting them in some type of air sealed container. But all the air needs to be removed for this to work. Hand warmers need a supply of oxygen. If the oxygen is cut off, the chemical reaction will cease. It will be put on pause until you re-expose it to the air. The best way to accomplish this is to zip it nearly closed and suck out the remaining air with your mouth and quickly seal it shut. <coughs> Just kidding. Another way is using saran wrap or any other type of plastic wrap. This way is a little more effective. You just wrap it tightly to get all the air out. But using a Ziploc bag to store in your pocket makes it a little easier. And when they're needed again, you remove them and reactivate them for a couple more hours. Now the cons are if you're very active during the winter time, you may have to buy a box of these and it could be quite expensive for some. And they're only a one use, even though you can make them reusable, but I find most people will never do that. And they have a limited shelf life and I've used them the following year and the chemical kind of binds together and gets a little lumpy so you may have to break it apart before shaking them. Some of them can get quite hot so you want to put some type of material between your skin and the hand warmer and one thing that's very important to know is when you store them deep in your pockets or other areas in your cold weather gear the oxidation is retarded because of the lack of oxygen and can't produce the needed warmth for the extremities. Now with that being said, a question that is frequently asked is should I use these hand warmers on a multiple days of hiking or camping? And my answer is yes and no. Let me explain. No if you're going to use them as a main source of heat. You should always have the right proper clothing to keep you warm even in those extreme cold temperatures. Never count on the chemical hand warmers. Count on your clothing. And yes, 
they are very effective in different situations. They're almost like this great luxury item to have with you in those extreme cold temperatures. Now some of the companies that make hand warmers like Hot Hands or Grabbers also make them not only for hands but also for the feet and the core area and other parts of the body. First let's look at some of the applications for the core area. Grabber warmers have some peel and stick body warmers that are fairly large in size with an adhesive back. That you can stick to any area of your body. You don't want to stick these to your skin, but to clothing like base layers. Some people swear that sticking them over your kidney area will help warm that blood that's being filtered, that is being pumped into your extremities. For those people that struggle with cold feet, hot hands make toe warmers. that you stick on the bottom of your feet near the toe area. Because of the restriction of the airflow in your boots, these are designed to be used in oxygen restricted environments. You really don't want to use these when you're hiking. Your feet will be warm when you're moving. It's hard enough for me to keep my feet from sweating. And also, I don't think they'd be very comfortable inside your boot walking on them for a long period of time. And last, for me, the most important area is the hand. The hand warmers come in two sizes, a regular and a large size. The regular size works great when you put it inside your glove or mittens. Another thing I do, you guys, I take these little hand warmers, but you don't want to count on them. I had some that didn't work. But you take these little hand warmers, and I'll take the hand warmer, put it in the glove, like so. So when my fingers get cold, I'll pull them out and then ball them up around that hand warmer. And when they're warm, I put them back in the finger and this works really well. So try it. That's a good tip for you guys. You can use the large size also, but I find that they work best inside your pockets. Now I don't use the body of the toe warmers. I never have a problem staying warm in those areas. But where I do like to use those hand warmers is when I'm doing some type of task like setting up and taking down the hammock and the tarp. Or working with cordage and all of my fingers exposed for dexterity and in those extreme cold temperatures, I have to be careful of frostbite. So what I'll do is either have them in the palm of my hands. Otherwise, with those large hand warmers, I'll stick my hand in my pockets when they get cold and grab those hand warmers until my fingers warm up. Then I'll continue the task. This system really speeds up setting up and taking down. Now I'm sure there's many other applications you can use with these hand warmers. If you'd like to share how you use them, or if you have any questions or comments, please write them down below. I'd love to hear from you. This is the Marine. Thank you for watching, and God bless. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden. I'll follow only golden, 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 golden things.